input is equal to screen manager dot input system. So now we're just getting a reference to that input system object. Now, in the previous tutorial, we built some useful commands like menu up, menu down, stuff like that. This time, we're going to change move up, move down to menu up and menu down. So let's go ahead and change move to menu, move down to menu, move left and move right, we can delete. And the method for menu up and menu down is new key press. If we hold the key, our menus will scroll too fast for us to make a useful selection. We may press up one more second than we are supposed to and we'll have five menu screen menu entries selected than we want it to. So that's an is new key press. And do the same thing for the menu up. And quit game, you can leave that. Center sprite, we can delete. Move, we can delete. And you can keep the functionality for the buttons if you want. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to have a keyboard, but I'll just leave it here. I might just comment these out, but you can leave what you want. A quick game, I'm going to rename to cancel. A menu cancel. But I'm going to leave the same effect, and I'm going to delete the button. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. Alright, so the input system is now done. So let's go back to the menu screen. Now, if input dot menu up, we want to move the desired selected item to the one above it. So we'll just say selected entry minus minus. Now, what happens if our selected entry goes into the negative? Well, let me do count for that. As you can see in the completed sample, there's no menu entries about this, so if we press up, it'll jump to the very bottom. So that's what we want to do here. If selected entry is less than zero, let's set the selected entry equal to menu entries dot count minus one. Why minus one is because we're going to use this as an array. We're just going to use a bracket and pass it the index we want and end bracket. So the count will be minus 1 because array starts at 0 and you get the idea from learning that from C sharp. Now if menu uh, input dot menu down, if we move down we're going to move, we're going to select the one below it, so selected entry plus plus. Now if we reach the very bottom and we move down again, we move down again and we'll jump to the very top. So that's what we are going for here. We need to repeat the same thing but if selected entry is greater than or equal to menu entries dot count, we're going to select it equal to zero. Why is it greater than or equal to? Because it's an array. If the count is greater than the array size, so selected entry will be equal to that when we press down from the last entry. It will be greater than that if we press down twice from the last entry. Which should never happen if you press down twice since it does it every game loop, but just for safety's sake or 
just to look good greater than or equal to. Okay, so that's it for getting the update selected. Now, let's get the cancel working. So if we cancel the menu system, we need to call the menu cancel method. And that's done. Now, if input dot menu select, which we forgot to create, public bool menu select get return is new key press keys dot enter. You can change the key you want to use as the selected entry, or you can do two keys, just make sure you do the OR, and so on. But for the tutorial, enter will be select, escape will be cancel, up will be menu up, down will be menu down. So if we go back to the menu screen, we now have the property menu select. Now we're just going to do the menu select method we need to pass it the selected entry and there we have it okay so now here comes a very complicated part getting the menu screen to update and draw and get it that nice bubble effect that we see here the scale increases, decreases, increases, and that's using the math functions. So let's do the update first, public override update. Uh, we do not need a base. I'm sorry, we do need the base. So, but now here's something a little bit different. We're going to do the code after the base instead of before the base. And the reason is we want the base dot update. We want to get everything updated. If it's exiting, we want it to increase the transition. If it's covered, we want to change the state of the screen. And if it's not active, we want it to increase the transition before we do the coding for our mini system. So position is equal to new vector two. We want to set the position equal to the start position and we do this by adding a new vector 2 that way it gets a new object instead of using the start position object because that way it will increment both of them which we do not want so after the base set update it sets the current it gets the state of the screen and it updates that depending on what is going on so we can do this here the screen state is equal to screen state that transition on or screen state is equal to screen state that is or transition off so if, tra if it's transitioning we want to do the little fly in and fly out animation we've seen here. So in order to do that we need to add a new vector to called acceleration. And this just gets a nice acceleration of the position which will give us a nice fade effect we're going for. That's going to be a new vector to now, a nice way to get that s transition that starts fast and slows down, starts fast and slows down, slows down and speeds up, is a math.power. And we're going to use the transition percent, how far along we are in the transition. We're going to subtract that by 1. 